women and children first. It's a common phrase that I think we often imagine being shouted in times of disaster, particularly maritime disasters when ships sink and the like. I've often seen it used by men's rights activists as proof that women enjoy an unfair advantage in our society. And it makes sense in a way. Why should men be expected to sacrifice their lives for women, particularly female strangers that they've never even met in, in cases of disaster? Why it's almost as though the rules of chivalry uh, negatively affect both men and women. For a long time, I've taken that common knowledge, the women and children first rule, as being truth without really examining it. But as a rational person, I understand that oftentimes common knowledge is uh, completely untrue. And so I was really intrigued to stumble across a study that was done in 2012 by Swedish researchers looking into whether or not it's true that men tend to sacrifice themselves for women in disasters at sea. They talk about the primary example being the Titanic, which, of course, 70% uh, of women and children survived, and only 20% of men survived. And that is a pretty stark example of men sacrificing themselves so that women and children can reach uh, safety. But these researchers thought that it would be better to look at not just one data point, but many more. And so they looked at 18 maritime disasters from the 1800s up through 2011. And what they found may surprise you. On average, the researchers found that women's survival in disasters at sea was about half that of men, and children had the worst survival rating of all. It's also worth noting that they found that crew members of the ship had a higher survival rate than passengers. So it seems as though instead of women and children first being considered the unofficial law of the sea, it should be something more like every man for himself. Uh, the researchers do note that the gender gap has been decreasing ever since World War I. They suggest that this is because women from then on began gaining more value in society. However, it's kind of difficult to test that. And I'm wondering how much of that gap decreasing might be due to women becoming more comfortable with physical fitness and also less likely to be wearing extremely restrictive clothing like bodices. I'm pretty sure I could outsurvive a uh, hoop skirt wearing heiress who had never learned to swim if we were both on a sinking ship together. That said, we can't really test that hypothesis without a time machine, both to pick up a few heiresses and to travel to a time when scientific research didn't have uh, ethics clauses in place to prevent drowning heiresses uh, for science. But uh, that said, due to this study, it seems pretty convincing that we might be able to cross off women and children first as an example of men being subjugated in our society.